assistant professor iisma bangalore so i am also the moderator for this webinar so today as you know our topic will be pharmaceutical technological innovations so before that i would like to give you a brief introduction about iisma bangalore so regarding iisma bangalore we are institute of health management and research and we are in the south campus that is in bulimangala road electronic city so you will be curious what iisma bangalore has to offer so to throw some light on that i'll give you a brief introduction so so my it team will be sharing the screen so yes. uh, next slide please so uh, next slide uh, the other one please uh, lamboda can you share the other other slide i mean the other 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 presentation yeah right right thank you so sorry for the interruption in between so can you please go to the next slide so iisma bangalore our legacy has started in 1984 we are a specialized research organization in post graduate education and training in health sector so our iisma university which is in jaipur so it came it has started in 1984 so we have our educational institutions academic institutions in bengaluru that is south campus and the north campus in delhi and we have a project of fees in kolkata next slide so we have started in 1984 just like i have mentioned so our bangalore campus was start has started in 2004 so we were we got the accreditation of nabed mba nba as well as we have this nba with us so mba equivalency was being awarded by association of indian universities and another thing so regarding our flagship program this is uh, we are having a pgdm that is a two year flagship program so we have a batch size of 120 next slide so regarding our mission vision and core values we are dedicated to improvement in standards of health through better management of healthcare and related programs so we are accomplishing this through the management research training consultation and institutional networking in national and global perspective when it comes to our vision we are emerging as a world class postgraduate and research organization we are generating and disseminating knowledge and providing students a unique learning experience in management education consultancy research and so that you will be are able to serve for the betterment of the society when it comes to our core values quality accountability trust transparency sharing knowledge and openness next slide so these are the key verticals where iisma bangalore is focused on academics research training and consultancy so when it comes to academics as i have mentioned before we are having a two year full time program with specialization of hospital health health it and pharmaceutical management so our placement record is excellent we have 100% placement record from our first batch and when it comes to research and publications so there are many projects in which we are involved we are in the thrust areas like aramc cs ncd health compliance and all these things and also when it comes to training we are involved in many short and long term certificate programs we are involved in student engagement programs webinar service webinar series certificate programs mdps ftps and edps and also we are involved in consultancy to faculties as well as to the institutions so again next slide 
So regarding our flagship program, we are having a two-year PGTM program. So just like I have mentioned, we have four specializations. So we were approved by AACT and also we have that accreditation from, uh, from NBA as well as AIU. AIU, the Association of Indian Universities provide us with the MBA equivalency. And again, we were ranked top hospital management college by Higher Education Magazine in 2017 and 18. Then we received the National Award of Excellence during World Congress in 2020 for the best academic and industry enterprise institute. Again, we have this rank, we were ranked, ranked 11th in the best B school when it comes to the week and also Outlook ranked us, ranked us as 10th in Bangalore in 2021 which, when it comes to the business schools. Next slide. So regarding our training program, we are involved in short-term uh, certificate programs, long-term uh, executive education programs, long-term certificate programs, MDPs, FTPs, student-focused training programs, as well as webinar series. So we are investigating to develop the vertical assessment center for learning and development. Next slide. So these are some uh, programs that our training department are involved in. That is certificate course in integrated digital intensive care management, nutrition and health, executive program on hospital management, as well as executive program on quality assurance, executive program of digital hospital management. Next. So these are some research programs or projects that are actually forward by HMR Bank Blue. We are involved in implementation research, operation research, large scale survey, social assessment, format and formative and impact assessment, health systems strengthening, nutrition and health, maternal and child health, urban and tribal health. So next slide, please. So these are some organizations in which we are actually collaborating and also we are involved in different projects. Uh, along we are in with UNICEF, HCL Foundation, DKT International, ICMR Dunderli, Karnataka Evaluation Authority, IHSC, Access Health International. So we are involved in empowerment and engagement of the community, child, childhood care and development. We are involved in clinical services, functioning of nutrition rehabilitation centers, assessment of current burden of service delivery on ASHAS. Next slide. So these are the accreditations that we have, AACT, NBA, NABET, NIF, and AIU. Next slide. So these are some organizations in which we are having our empowerment uh, with some missions or resource centers. That is Jal Jeevan Mission, NHSRC, National Health Authority, and Karnataka Evaluation Authority. Next slide. So we are involved in consultancy services and uh, we, we are really proud to say that we are the first educational institute in India to be accredited with NAPET as hospital and health organization for NABH standards. So we facilitate various health institutions to go for quality improvement and accreditation in India. So we are recognized as empaneled agency by National Health Authority to improve the quality and standards of healthcare facilities in India. So we haul the credit of conducting regular training for XEO professionals on NAB standards. Next slide. So these are the top recruiters of our institution. Uh, ZS, Gurjil, Cortez, Practo, Deloitte, Accenture. So there are many that I would like to say. So when you are looking at the slide, you can see there are many recruiters that are involved. So they are helping us to attain 100% placement record FTA. Next slide. Thank you. So this is all from my part when it comes to the introduction of ISMR Bangalore. I think that gives you a clear view about what ISMR Bangalore, Bangalore is. So let us uh, go to our scientific session. So we know that the emerging technologies that, are, that characterize the industry 4.0, it is like a connectivity to advanced analytics, robotics, and automation. So these uh, trends has an immense potential that can revolutionize the elements of pharma manufacturing. So digitalization and automation ensures better quality complaints by reducing the manual errors as well as the variability. So similarly, when we are thinking about in 
industry 4.0 there is one another term that should come into your mind that is pharma 4.0 or pharmaceutical industry 4.0 so this is about updating the pharmaceutical industry with respect to the trends that are actually happening in industry 4.0 that is incorporating advanced digital elements and enabling the pharmaceutical quality system to enhance uh, to en enhance the life cycle of pharmaceutical product to improve the transparency to improve the connectivity and to have a control over the quality as well as the operations so this is helping us in um, R and D department, marketing, sales, drug development, and all these areas that is actually involved along with the pharmaceutical um, industry. So, so we know that industry 4.0 is about the novel technologies, and it is encouraging our pharmaceutical industry to grow. And also, it is revamping our organization, revamping our industry, revamping our pharmaceutical sector. So that actually means like technologies, how important the technologies like artificial intelligence, additive manufacturing, digital therapeutics and data analytics, big, big data analytics have been. So they are spurring innovations around the industry and uh, they are helping them in research, development, marketing, sales, drug development and all these areas of pharmaceutical industry. So these technologies are actually facilitating a more advanced effective and sustainable pharmaceutical industry so before going to the session i would like uh, you to know our eminent panel members so please please share the slide Yes, um, next slide, please. So, first of all, I would like to introduce you to Dr. Sajiv Chandran, Director, Advanced Drug Delivery Research and Biopharmaceutics, IBIVC Pharmaceutical R&D, Lupin Limited, Pune. Uh, Dr. Chandran is involved in leading a diverse research group of formulators, analysts, biopharmaceutics and IBIVC expert in design, development and filing advanced drug delivery technologies. So he's also leading a group involved in design and development of bioreleven methodologies, biopharmaceutical interventions, and also that facilitates reverse engineering and development of complex generics. So he has 20 years of experience in research work. He has seven granted patents and 20 plus patent applications. He is the recipient of FTP Leadership Awards 2019 under Rising Stars category, Young Pharmacy Teacher Award in 2008, which has been provided by Association of Pharmaceutical Teachers in India, APTI, and also Young Scientist Award in 2005 by Department of Science and Technology, Government of India. Dr. Sajiv Chandran has more than 50 research publications in peer-reviewed journals of international repute and has presented or co-authored over 50 research papers in national and international conference or symposia. Welcome to the session, Dr. Sachiv Chandra. So, uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, sir, uh, Sajiv, sir. Okay, uh, now I, will, I would like to introduce you to Mr. Sachin Bhatt. So Mr. Sachin Bhatt is presently the Program Officer of Public Affairs Center. Sachin Sar is a certified Lean Sigma Black Belt Professional with a master's degree focused on back pharmacology. He has more than six years of experience in clinical research, supply chain management with demonstrated history of working in pharmaceutical industries. He has worked in collaboration with government organizations like the Department of Health and Family Welfare, RDPR, PPMS, and KARC in clinical as well as public health projects. He has his expertise on program and project management, clinical research, public health, data analytics, and regulatory affairs. Welcome to the webinar, Mr. Sachin Bhatt. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Yes. So uh, the next slide, please. 
This is Mr. Pradeep Viman. He is presently working as clinical research associate at Tech Observer India Private Limited. So he is a versed and skilled professional with strong background in ICGGCP, NDCTR 2019, medical writing, clinical operations and ethics. He has more than five years of experience in pharmaceutical, clinical and life sciences industry. So Mr. Pradeep has his expertise on medical writing, clinical operations and clinical trials. Welcome to the webinar, Mr. Pradeep. Thank you so much, Dr. Subodh. Yes. So I think, um, yes. Uh, yeah, right. Um, I think we can go to the Q&A session. So, So there are a lot of questions for the panel members. So I would like to share my first question. One second, uh, to Dr. Sajiv Chandran. Hello, sir. Sir, you are leading the advanced drug delivery and biopharmaceutical department of Lupin. The term industry 4.0, we know that it is trending in the healthcare sector as well as the pharmaceutical sector. So can you share a little bit about this concept of industry 4.0 and uh, how it will be really helpful in transforming the pharmaceutical industry? Thank you, uh, Dr. Subodh, for that kind introduction. And uh, yeah, I would be happy, very happy to share my personal perspective about the concept of Industry 4.0. Now, Industry 4.0 was not coined all of a sudden. It was actually coined by uh, a, one of the German agency wherein they actually wanted automation and automobile manufacturing in Germany uh, because uh, the German automobile sector have always been a front uh, runner. They have been employing cutting edge technologies for centuries now and they were some of the benchmark innovators in automobile sector and they were slowly losing their edge and that is when um, uh, this term industry 4.0 was con was coined in 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 practical sense uh, and that was essentially to uh, sort of uh, um, automate uh, the automobile industry in germany and uh, improve its efficiency and uh, productivity and profitability so that was the theme around which that term was coined but then uh, since it made sense and it made sense in every industry so people actually adapted adopted the whole concept across a wide spectrum of industries over a period of last 10 years. Okay. But then if you put it, put this whole concept of industry 1.0 or 2.0 in, in context, uh, it is like industry 1.0 was the industrial revolution in late 18th century, where our objective was to convert instead of using human or animal energy, use uh, uh, a, another form of energy. And that is when uh, steam uh, boilers and stuff like that came into picture. Then industry 2.0 was where uh, consumerism increased and you need to do mass production, right? And then industry 3.0 was when uh, actually uh, people thought about automation, uh, application of uh, 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 programming and application of, uh, uh, it, it actually mirrored with innovation in the entire uh, electronic sector, uh, wherein integrated circuits started running the motors or the, the machines or equipment and automation came in. So now after automation, what is the next thing? So that is what industry 4.0 is all about, which means combining this physical automation that is already been achieved in the industry, which has already increased efficiency and productivity in the industry, and then combine it with the cyber concept, like uh, the internet of thing concept, and then try to create smart factories or smart automation, wherein which would be intuitive in nature, uh, which would be driven by data. They would learn, they would create data, they would generate data, assimilate data, learn from the data, the system, or the program itself will learn from the data and then try to apply that learning in further improving the system. And that is what is the concept of smart factory. So now this is when we talk about industry in general, uh, 
and and rural innovation that has happened in the last 10 years which have actually uh, been supporting this uh, revolution if i can put it uh, internet of things if you uh, which is already been talked about in cloud computing uh, artificial intelligence and like machine learning that's another concept that is uh, actually aiding smart factory or smart manufacturing concepts edge computing and edge computing is the uh, sort of uh, the the heart of any smart industry 4.0 revolution because uh, usually it was the human mind or brain or the person present on the system who used to take decision which are time sensitive so wherein uh, if on a production line or on an operating table the operating table a surgeon takes a decision at this part of the moment in a factory on the production line the product line operator or the line manager takes a decision at this part of the moment to whatever what type of corrective steps have to be taken in a in a uh, uh, in a supply chain uh, system it is to be it was it was the, uh, the 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 associates involved on the line that you should take but now people have actually revolutionized if you if i take an example of uh, edge computing in uh, and the way dhl and blue dart have implemented in their uh, entire consignment management system delivery system the entire process is automated it is all robotic and robots take the decision as to which package would move in into which line for which type uh, which car uh, to the which cargo terminal for which flight number and everything is done by robots so it's a, it's a totally a uh, cyber system uh, totally uh, automated system that is controlled so, so so when you look at industry and and manufacturing we are envisaging something similar to that and plus to that you will have to add cyber security because uh, and then they there is a concept called there is a, a paradigm called cyber or digital twin and digital twin is nothing but you control through artificial intelligence internet of things program softwares a program or, or a process the process when it is run this system will collect all the data and create its own digital twin now what happens that that is what is going to result in uh, uh, the digital system learning from the physical system and becoming smarter than the physical system and then controlling the physical system right so 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 this is something that the, the digital twin concept is the, is one that is being uh, very vocally talked about in terms of uh, uh, in every industry including in pharma industry and if i have to give you one or two example how exactly uh, industry 4.0 would work in pharma industry it would be in uh, in, in in production areas like prime the first application would be in pharmaceutical production and when you look at pharmaceutical production then it would be with respect to optimization of the process or maintenance management or increasing process stability or improving process performance avoiding non compliance or accelerating uh, the quality reporting system so these are some of the places where uh, people have already started adapting and adopting all the digital tools that is available so very large scale digitalization is underway in this particular area and then there are few other areas like i talked about supply chain uh, pharma supply chain has never been automated the way dhl or blue dart have automated their um, consign cargo management processes uh, so so there is lot of application expected in that area and then there is a huge a very big area that has been talked about digital therapeutics where uh, people will have um, the entire uh, process of diagnosis to treatment is is expected to be controlled through uh, this intervention here i since although you asked me about the pharma industry but then i'll give you an example of ibm watson which is expected to revolutionize the legal system once it it, it gets implemented in that sense in the sense uh, you would have digital lawyers rather than physical lawyers like because the the system the software would actually tell you uh, whether this case is winnable or what is the probability of win uh, what is any precedence with this respect to your case with, with all the reported cases across the globe in all uh, geographies so 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 that's an interesting concept uh, so in healthcare uh, it cannot be implemented the way it would be implemented in a legal system because in a legal system you always have a, a option of review 
in the sense you can actually appeal whereas in a therapeutic system where you are talking about somebody's life health uh, you don't have a review mechanism a de wrong decision is a wrong decision and it, it it is permanently done right so 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 from that perspective there would be some difference the way it would be in, uh, uh, implemented in health therapeutics but then it would be implemented and actually uh, i don't know whether it is a boon or a bane but uh, uh, the the covid pandemic actually has accelerated that process so the online consulting uh, online um, uh, disbursement of prescription, writing of prescription, and online diagnosis and treatment actually were very prevalent in that period. So, so from that perspective, so so that's my sense where all this uh, uh, revolution will take us in the next few years, and then progressively, when everything gets automated, so probably uh, we would have someone something like Watson, IBM Watson for uh, um, um, uh, for for the therapeutics. Also, we, people have already started talking about Google doctors and all like uh, and all of us do that if i if i have an ailment or and i have a discomfort i google and check uh, whether i'm an expert or not to understand what does this symptom mean and what type of treatments are required so so that is something which the common man who has access to digital technologies have already started doing so 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 i think uh, that's the uh, baseline and from there whatever advancement will happen would be industry 4.0 for the pharma sector Yes, yes. Sir. So I think that gives you a clear idea about what Industry 4.0 is. But it's not all about Industry 4.0. That has also shared about the history, how this 4.0 has actually arrived, how 1.0 has actually arrived, and also how this digitalization has actually changed the perspectives of the common man. Also, similarly, this Google Doctors has been a very common day because whenever there is an there is a health issue, people are searching things on things on. Um, Google and uh, finding answers. Someone is getting too much concerned about what they are finding on the Google. This is quite common nowadays. And also, uh, this has also increased the sale of OTG drugs, OTC drugs on a large scale. So I think um, during our session, we will also have a word regarding that thing also. So again, uh, now I think um, I can come to Mr. Sachin Bhatt. So the question is, before going to Mr. Sachin, but I would like to give you a brief introduction about what big data analytics. So that is what we are going to deal about from now. So regarding the big data analytics, uh, wait, wait for a second, one second. Okay, yeah, right. So regarding the big data analytics, it is a concept that defines the accumulation of data and analysis of data in a vast quantity. So vast amount of data can be accumulated from records and they can be analyzed and they can be interrupted using different, state, uh, different strategies and it can be used for future purposes under the concept of big data. So these advanced technologies can trigger the process of data analytics. It's not like small amount of data and all. It can be interrupted. Inter uh, when it comes to small, a small amount of data, we can use our tra traditional data techniques for assessment of the small amount of data. But when it comes to big data, large amount of data, we need a uh, big data analytics where technologies are incorporated to handle and analyze large amount of data. So I think I can come back to Mr. Sachin, but sir, uh, you are someone with years of experience in pharmaceutical industry, as well as in public health. So how do you think this big data analytics can actually revolutionize the pharmaceutical industry and health sector? Uh, thank you for the introduction on the big data and uh, introduction of me. Um, basically, how you uh, like as you mentioned, the big data is one of the largest uh, data uh, bank, uh, which has different kinds. Like, it is too large to analyze, and it's too complex to categorize the data. Uh, so that means uh, when when we call the big data, it will be uh, about uh, TB. I mean, uh, it will be more than uh, TB, and it goes to n, n number of uh, uh, data size. So basically, when we categorize this, there are uh, uh, five elements. Uh, we call it as five V's of big data. That is volume, velocity, variety, uh, versity, and value. Uh, 
so if any category any elements of this are uh, you know uh, categorized under them or the data falls under these five b's then we call it as big data how the big data is analyzed is one of the technique that uh, actually uh, already dr sajeev already mentioned that uh, how the process and other things optimized that is the big data is captured how ibm is uh, telling that uh, uh, we, you, can you win the uh, case or not uh, that is based on the data which is available across the world on the same scenario we we might have different cases though the, the bank build up the build up the data with respect to those uh, category of cases then it says that okay you can win or not the same in health sector how we can uh, you know majorly uh, i can say there are two aspects you have mentioned how it can improve uh, improvise in the pharmaceutical industries and the public sector so public sector is a different sector where um, uh, where pharmaceutical industry is a different sector so the catering would be the same patients but in the public health we uh, majorly goes under the government organization or institutions where in the pharmaceutical industry it captures the private uh, market and the public market so now uh, a big data analytics would help uh, majorly in the uh, pharmaceutical industry is the market capturing uh, to improvise the Uh, effectiveness of the uh, marketing in the pharmaceutical industry and new uh, you know revenue opportunities that they can build uh, based on the big data which is captured across the uh, uh, pharmaceutical database though they can capture and analyze with the ai ml techniques uh, which is already available with us so we need to apply the ai ml techniques to understand where exactly uh, the data are lying and what is exactly the outcomes that is we require so if you if you go for uh, marketing uh, market improvement of the pharmaceutical industry there are different sectors uh, and different data sets available so you analyze it with the uh, different ai techniques to understand what is actually the market requirement that is the consumer requirement what is that based on that pharmaceutical industries can uh, capture their market then uh, and one more is customer personalization what is that the customer would be requiring so based on that you would uh, do the analysis of big data and you get uh, into that and already mentioned by dr sajeev the improved improved oper- operational efficiencies in the pharmaceutical industry it may be the manufacturing it may be the clinical trial it may be the uh, pre clinical or virtual screenings so you can put all this uh, big data techniques and the aml uh, into it so the overall data science would improve uh, the uh, outcomes of pharmaceutical industry from the pre clinical trial to the uh, post marketed surveillance uh, uh, activities so it reduces your time it reduces your cost so that is the major uh, you know uh, take away from the big data analysis and the ai ml techniques so when you i can give you little insights on the clinical trials and the pre clinical trials how uh, usually traditional way works and the how the big data and ai ml techniques works so usually uh, when you start uh, identifying the leads and it's uh, in the virtual screening and then you come for the pre clinical and clinical then you come for the market so a product takes at least 15 years to come to the product with billion rupees of money so when you go with the big data analytics and ai ml techniques in it so you reduce the time in the uh, virtual screening so what we call the high throughput screenings where you identify the leads and it's of a molecule there might be uh, rows of molecules which shows similar activity but you don't know which is the lead and which is the hit so to identify it so you, if you apply the big data analysis and the ai techniques so you reduce the time and what is the time it takes around 6 years to reduce to 3 half of it so then you come for clinical pre clinical so you you can do it virtually by using big data analysis analytics saying that okay this is the method and this is the pre clinical trial that we can apply so that uh, the success rate of the pre clinical trial would be this so based on that you can identify which method or which kind of models you want to put it in pre clinical you can get uh, before going into pre clinical by this ai ml and big data analytics so when you come to clinical that is patient based so you can reduce Uh, you know uh, the uh, i cannot say sample size you can optimize the sample size from the big data analytics 
so that uh, the reduction in the sample size and the time is taken for clinical trials can be achieved by the big data analytics and AI techniques, where you can analyze CMAX, DMAX, all those things before, uh, before based on the preclinical and uh, virtual screening data, which is available in the bank and identify what is exactly is required. So totally uh, the 15 years time lapse can be reduced to half of its based on the AIML technique and it would be almost accurate. You know, you, you cannot say, see, always uh, when you go for uh, already uh, Dr. Saju told it's boon or ban, we don't know, but when we apply it, so uh, we always say that uh, benefits over risk. So there might be some challenges and risk on the uh, big data analytics, but, but the efficiency and effectiveness of this analytics, big data analytics in the pharmaceutical industry would uh, be a uh, boon to uh, us. Uh, you know, getting those data. When you come for uh, pharmaceutical industry, I mean, public health, uh, majorly where we put in the big data analytics is to understand uh, from the government perspective, what they see is like, what would be the requirement of drug per year? So for example, if I say that, then we have to go back to the uh, historical data and see the seasonalities. You have different cases, you know, vector bond, those uh, non-communicable disease, communicable disease. So put in all this data into uh, the uh, analytics and put the AML. So you can get uh, the predictive values or you can forecast easily what is the upcoming diseases that will be coming in what region and what season and what is the quantity of that drug is required based on the predictive uh, of the patient footfall. So you can easily predict three kind of activities there from the AML techniques are a patient footfall drug, what is that drug requirement and what is the disease or morbidity across the state or region or place. So with these kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, activities, you can easily predict all this uh, from the public health. So the delivery of the services, whatever is uh, uh, promised can be delivered effectively. So that means uh, we usually we say right, uh, right time, right drug and right doctor. So everything can be available at the right time if you apply this big data analytics and AML techniques in the public health. So this is what I mean to say from the big data, big data analytics and the techniques. Yes, uh, that was uh, a very valuable suggestion from Sachin. But that something that I noticed was that point that is at the right time, the right doctor, the right service. So that is very important when it comes to healthcare, when it comes to healthcare service providers and all. So just like he has shared, it has improved the marketing. It has improved, uh, it has helped the pharmaceutical organization to gain more revenues. And also the most important thing that I felt like that was suggested from his side is customer personalization. Big data analytics helps a lot in customer personalization and also assessment of the consumer behavior that actually helps the organizations to involve in a decision-making process that depends on customers or based on the customer personalization profiles. So uh, that is, and I think now I can have a question to Mr. Pradeep Bimal. So, yes. So, one second, Mr. Pradeep Bimal. Uh, so you have been working in clinical operations for more than a demi decade. So what kind of impact are you expecting from big data analytics on these clinical services as well as clinical operations? And can you tell us a little bit about what our students can have when it comes to the opportunities associated with the big data analytics? Hello, sir. Am I audible, Pradeep, sir? Am I audible to you? Yes, yes. Sir. Yeah, yeah. So basically, we are, you have briefly discussed regarding the big data analytics, but uh, the major concern the, I will also briefly about, I will tell you that the, basically big data analytics is a form of advanced analytics, which involves the application with the elements such as predictive model, statistical algorithms, what if analysis provided by analytical system. And uh, nowadays, uh, many pharmaceutical companies use big data analytics system and software to make data driving decisions that improve business related outcomes and trial related outcomes. So 
the data is largely available in pharmaceutical medical industry such as historical data trial data drug data electronic medical scores sensor data human genome real life experience scientific publication and uh, social media data also so these pharmaceutical industry building a big data and a platform and design defined as that common analytic molecule that can apply it for the many types of clinical trials uh, with the help of the big, uh, big data analytics many clinical scientists make data driven decision research reach conclusion faster and more accurately and also big data analytics can also accelerate clinical trials but also help reduce the risk and cost associated with the clinical trial big data and so i would say ki big data analytics play the crucial role in the future of clinical trial so here i i will provide you some answers from some examples regarding the big data analytics it will clinical trial is now majorly used for the clinical trial design like patient and recruitment recruitment and the analysis of the trials with the help of the software system and uh, nowadays this kind of database we are using the patient monitoring investigate and site selection in the for the clinical trial and uh, using operational data drive to a enable clinical trial analytics how so in the strategic leadership to obtain necessary errors in and test data so these are the basic two trials from um, examples so we are using for the clinical trial so in, in clinical operation uh, and these are the and these term of can resolve the some find some problem significant difficulty in recruitment in the clinical operations like problems on the quantity of data managing big data to recruit patient operating data technologies to involve patient and better health outcome less clinical clinical data drop out rate with the use of big data earlier was a, like happen some somewhat happen ki we have like we designed the clinical trial but uh, there were lots of drop outs rate so it will cost the company for the trial and time time also so now will with the help of big data we this clinical data drop out are lesser gaining big data drop out for the analysis sooner to minimize cost and the knowing big data roles in expectation of healthcare Okay. these are the basic significant difficulty resolved with the help of the big data analytics and then in terms of the i would say opportunity uh, there is a lot of opportunity now in market and so many companies big companies like mnc group like lady bet is here in the here bear vexters also there so we provide the secondary research analyst as a research analyst team these are the vacancies opportunity with the the example mnc provided with the help of to build a medical career career for the students for that in a lifetime in a, in, a, in a, our future and also they go for the project management with the help of this thing and clinical operation with the vast area for that so they can use it. they they go for the basically mm. some time of research research analyst secondary research and qualitative and quantitative research analyst these are the opportunities are currently there in it yes pratip sir so thank you so much uh, for your points so what i understood like when it comes to the big, big data analytics it can help a lot in reducing the clinical errors since the data are actually properly recorded and assessed the number of errors can be reduced because the clinical errors is something is a which is a major challenge when it comes to the clinical services as well as for the clinical providers so by using the big data analytics by reducing the number of errors we can provide a better a uh, clinical approach or maybe we can provide a better clinical service for the patients so that's all so and now we can have a discussion of on another very important topic when it comes to the pharmaceutical industry that is artificial intelligence it is not all about it is not about the pharmaceutical industry it is about the health sector also 
artificial intelligence has been transforming the pharmaceutical industry for many years so we know that it has revolutionized the industry and had led to various inventions like virtual assistants self driving cars smart homes chatbots surgical boards and so much more so even in uh, whenever you are looking into an into a website you can see this chatbots more most of the organizations has actually got equipped with the chatbots who are actually using the artificial intelligence so when it comes to the data driven age the companies across all parallels of the industry they are adopting this big data artificial intelligence technologies and all so how it has actually revamped the pharmaceutical industry in the sense like they provide an ocean of untapped opportunities for business transformation so ai powered analytics has actually brought a radical shift in innovation paradigm of the pharma sector and also has a potential to foster the innovation by improving the productivity and delivering outcomes across the value chain so they can significantly improve the value proportion of pharma companies and also create new business models so so i would like to ask a question to dr saju chandran with respect to the artificial intelligence sir how do you think this artificial intelligence can be a handy tool when it comes to the drug r and d as well as in the manufacturing it's a very uh, pertinent question uh, dr subodh uh, let's see uh, what are what is artificial intelligence there are two components to it it is uh, when you say artificial intelligence it is a non human taking a decision right in a very layman sense a program or a boat taking a decision now how can a boat take a decision when the boat is not aware of anything so so that is where i was talking about the digital twin so unless and until you feed in relevant information a, a algorithm cannot take a decision so 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 it's basically uh, garbage in garbage out in case the input is not right right so so from from that perspective uh, artific application of artificial intelligence hinges on how intelligently data is collected stored retrieved and used by the algorithm right uh, so so the first step in application of artificial intelligence is automation which is already been done the plc scada based control of the operation and then making the uh, system learn uh, the nuances of the process the algorithm learn the nuances of the process using that uh, uh, that the uh, using the data that is getting collected and, and as the system gets trained understand all the variables in the process then the system is in a position to control it say for example uh, i'll give you a very simple example that is employed in, uh, in in a pharmaceutical process you know like every tablet is a compact mass right every tablet that you so a tablet is to be compressed and when a tablet is compressed it has to be compressed at a particular optimal hardness to make it that compact so too hard a tablet would not may help it disintegrate and dissolve when it is ingested and too soft at compression would result in the tablet breaking before it actually reaches the patient so so you don't want either of that so 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 you have a very simplest application of artificial intelligence is where the system the 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 the, the scada the plc that controls the operation knows like what is the limit within which the hardness has to be controlled depending upon the variation in the process you are able to compress you have to increase or decrease the compression forces so that is the simplistic way of applying artificial intelligence in uh, a, a manufacturing process but then when we talk about manufacturing process it's a collection of several unit operations and right from starting from the raw material dispensing till uh, the packaging and uh, distribution of the final uh, product in pharma sector so so artificial intelligence can be applied in any of these uh, processes provided we are in a position to provide the basic framework of data analytics to that what is the decision making uh, process involved like how exactly the uh, 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 the system the, the algorithm should understand deviation evaluate deviation and what type of corrective measures have to be applied for which all type of deviation and and, and at what stage and how much right so this is a decision which 
the algorithm has to take so now uh, and then pharma industry in that sense have ha, is is still not based on continuous operation like there are very only few products products or few processes or few uh, you, units for every company which may have uh, a continuous operation so in a continuous operation applying of artificial intelligence is very critical and it's very much important whereas in a batch process wherein after every unit operation there is a break in the process and uh, there is a quality uh, check to be employed physically so in those stages application of artificial intelligence is indirect in the sense it is not controlling the process it is controlling the quality assurance process wherein uh, the the measured parameters are fed in and the algorithm decides whether uh, the, the 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 desired uh, value have been attained or, or is it of whether it is within the tolerance uh, limit or, or or not so 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 six sigma concept or whatever statistical process control process concepts are fed into the system and that is how uh, the artificial intelligence is getting implemented in the manufacturing operation uh, but then there is a far wider application for that especially uh, in terms of uh, uh, in the analytics part say for example how do you make supply uh, of production forecast so when you make for production forecast if you already have the seasonal uh, flu uh, data set input as an example if i can give you as an example so you know when is the season of flu so you know like what type of forecast can need can be made using that uh, for uh, different type of flu medicines right so uh, so 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 maybe uh, there is a wider application for data analytics and artificial intelligence algorithm based decision making process in production planning in sales forecasting uh, in uh, supply chain management in terms of uh, um, in in pharma sector and then it is also very much uh, uh, uh applicable in areas where you do a lot of uh, data mining uh, say for example symmetry analysis or pattern recognition uh, I, I i run a reaction and then i get an observation and i want to check if this observation has already been reported by a similar reaction or a different reaction so now so that i know exactly where my reactions stand and whatever modification i have to do so so there is that is another area where analytics can work in and uh, a very uh, 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 an area which is very much flourishing with the application of artificial intelligence is the area of pharmacovigilance wherein uh, adverse reactions or adverse events are reported the collation of that and then uh, uh, and because there the big data is involved because for every drug molecule that is approved anywhere in the world you start getting uh, a database is, is actually create getting created at the back end where all adverse events associated with that molecule is already being concentrated so now any new observation say for example in case of uh, antiviral clinical uh, sorry covid anti covid uh, um, uh, the vaccine clinical trial one in a million case was reported for the first vaccine trial right where you have uh, uh, spastic disability was reported now can i attribute that to the uh, vaccine or is it um uh, is it it was a it was a general natural event that occurred with the patient now how do we and this has happened probably after 15 days of vaccination or 30 days of vaccination now this is where uh, the artificial intelligence based data analytics have a big role to play in understanding how close this event is to a intervention or to b intervention so can i attribute can i conclude that temporarily or it, it it is associated with a particular action that i took in case of let's say clinical trial or in case of clinical medicine where i am already uh, under treatment so is it associated or not associated so so that is somewhere where uh, uh, you have a lot of maybe the other panelists would be able to elaborate more on the clinical application and clinical trial because a, a natural extension of this application is in collecting data and uh, recording data in case of clinical trials and uh, managing those clinical trials and this is mostly done uh, through uh, 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 
iterative uh, al algorithms which work behind the scene to uh, manage the whole processes. So I would leave it to the other panelists to uh, maybe uh, enlighten on other aspects of this application here in uh, the healthcare industry. Yes, at least. So there were a lot of key points from Dr. Sajiv. So one of the important thing that I have noted is like uh, how it actually helped in case of hardness testing. So we have heard about Monsanto hardness tester and all during our PG days, but we now he has actually shared about how A is controlling the hardness. So how they are controlling that the tablet is having the recoil decide hardness what it actually wants or how it is actually helping when it comes to the chromatographic techniques that was actually adapted for a particular drug. So, and also how this algorithm is helping us a lot when it comes to disease forecasting. And all. So when it comes to disease forecasting, I think uh, Sachin but can help us a lot. And uh, I have a question to his side um, with respect to this uh, disease forecasting. So. Sir, can you tell me about how this is so impactful when it comes to this disease forecasting, how it can predict these diseases and predict the uh, or help the healthcare providers in predicting diseases? Yes. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> it is basically AI is like uh, already uh, Dr. Sajiv told that it is basically algorithm and algorithm is fed by us. Uh, and what is actually the input and the output. If the input is not right and the algorithm predicts whatever it's required on its own and it will be a false, uh, the positive results or which is not actually the accurate. So when you say about uh, early detection or uh, disease prevention, so there are already um, um, many uh, AI ML techniques that has been already applied and it is accurate and is able to achieve the required outcomes. So uh, basically the engaging uh, three P's that, uh, that is patient, physicians and pharmacists. So the data which is actually aggregated from the patients, the physician prescriptions or diagnostics and the pharmacist is the major treatment uh, parameters. I mean, uh, if you take the treatments, uh, then what is the drag dose, all those, uh, if you aggregate, so you get in uh, different kinds of different data sets. So that is big data, we call it as, and you need to apply these respective AIML techniques, which uh, is the uh, challenging one uh, the currently. The so once you apply it and you analyze what is actually uh, will be the outcome. So in predicting of disease, so there are two aspects you asked me. That is, one is disease prevention and uh, the early detect of the disease. So disease prevention is like, you know, seasonality wise, you get the flus uh, and any other uh, diseases. You, you based on the patient footfall and the diagnostics and the treatment. So, you know, different region and the different seasons has different kinds of diseases uh, across the seasonalities. So you aggregate the data across, see, uh, when you're applying the IML techniques in the disease prevention, and it, it will be to the specific region. So when you go for the region, you have the demographics of the region and geography of the region. So you know you have the patient footfall and patient treatment diagnostics. So based on those criteria and the data sets, if you analyze uh, the AIM, you apply the ML techniques, so you'll be able to understand what diseases would be uh, coming in the uh, upcoming days. You can forecast what is exactly the disease that would be coming in the next upcoming years, month on month. So based on that, I can give example like preventing the dengue and malaria. So you know that what is the season that uh, the dengue spikes are high. So based on the previous historical data and the patient put forward. So you can just easily identify where, where the diseases lies and what, what is the spike rate in the uh, seasons and the regions. So based on that, you can predict all those diseases and prevent it. So this is the prevention. Early detection is like, you know, I can give you the example of cancer. Uh, in, uh, in US, they had uh, one uh, program called Cancer Moons, uh, Moonshots uh, Program. So where they applied the AML techniques to predict the cancer, uh, early detect of the cancer and treat it. To, to reduce the treatment period to half of it and increase the life expectancy. 
So uh, big data and AI in cancer detection can <clears throat> early detect and cure. So majorly it takes the data on patient history. It, see, it, it is not of the single patient. It is of uh, the overall uh, the uh, database bank you have already. You know, like if you say the breast cancer, you know that what is the uh, um, you know uh, demographic of the breast cancer, what is the vitals and what are all the other uh, clinical parameters that breast cancer uh, possess. So you have those in the data bank and uh, when you, in new patients uh, go under CT and biopsy and other things, uh, when you put those things in the AML techniques, which already uh, the machine learning and AI have already learned it based on the algorithms and the data set. So it easily detects, okay, this, this might be a breast cancer, this might be a lung cancer. So based on that, uh, data sets, the, it is easy to detect the uh, early stages of many uh, diseases. Even the you know deep learning and there is a technique called convolution neural network type. So which can detect, which has already been applied in detecting the early breast cancer in by using the clinical data. Uh, by, uh, clinical data, it may be a CT, biopsy, all the, all the parameters which is available as a diagnostics, those data will be applied to detect it. So then when it comes to curing, so data, uh, like, you know, uh, always treatment plan for chemotherapy is like, you know, uh, blindfolded, it's to the trees. So, you know, the trees that you take 10 uh, uh, different kinds of uh, stones and you throw it at the tree and you, you know that it, in 10, two, um, two may fall down, two, two fruits can fall down. The same way chemotherapy is like that. We don't know, like the target specific chemotherapies are yet to be achieved. So there are nano suspension and formulation which is available in the market, uh, which increases the bioavailability of the formulation, but not target specific. So uh, so I'm already, maybe uh, you might not know the target specific and nano formulation. I can give a, bit, a little bit uh, insight on it. So chemotherapy is an, uh, uh, a, a ther uh, you know, therapy and the formulation which is inserted into the IV for killing the cancer cells. So when you insert it the chemotherapy, so even the normal cells uh, can get died of the chemotherapy, including the uh, cancerous cell. So that is the major risk of the chemotherapy. So in the uh, current years, they have uh, done it as a nano formulation, nano formulation, which reduces the, um, you know, uh, other uh, dispersion. Like if you want it in the liver, then it goes up to the liver and it gets uh, you know, disperse into the uh, metabolic system and then it treats, I mean, uh, ap activity happens at the uh, liver. Whereas in liver also, we don't know, like uh, we have uh, uh, the all parts can be affected in the liver. So healthy and uh, the cancerous cell be affected with the nano suspension or formulation. Whereas target specific, if I consider, you know, that uh, we have a specific uh, uh, protein in the cancers where the normal cell doesn't possess those proteins. So we need to uh, we need to you know uh, find a ligand which binds the uh, specific target protein uh, where it carries the uh, chemotherapy agent and delivers to the respective uh, cancer. So that are upcoming. So that uh, where in identifying the ligand to the specific target protein can be used by AML techniques. So you understand with the basics of uh, proteins and their basic structures. So you start uh, treat, I mean, loading the data and uh, start building the algorithm based on the data available for proteins and ligands. So it, there you can reduce these kind of risk which is happening from the chemotherapy. So you, you'll be able to identify the ligands which is specific to the target. Based on that, you can uh, do the uh, formulations, those things, and you can do the uh, chemotherapy aspects. That is one thing. So, and even uh, see, uh, you have different kinds of data sets available based on the treatment plans. So, you know that single molecule possess two different kinds of uh, treatment activity. Like if you go for aspirin, it also has the uh, NSAID activity and it also reduces the, um, you know, uh, volume and uh, thinning of the blood we call the anti uh, clotting agent. So, so like that, when you have that, that you when you apply AIML techniques to those drugs or the drug banks, so you'll be able to identify the different uh, treatment activity that been possessed by different drugs. So like that unexpected discovery was uh, uh, Desipiramine. Desipiramine was an antidepressant 
uh, which was also able uh, be, be, when were doing the AML uh, analysis on the different drugs, they also find out that desipiramine was then uh, was possessing the anti-cancer uh, uh, for the lung cancer specific certain types. So this is how uh, it will affect. I mean, AML uh, can uh, predict, early detect. Uh, I mean, uh, disease prevention and it reduces the uh, treatment. Uh, you know, span and even it also increases the life expectancy of the uh, patients when we apply this. So it this is the one of the uh, uh, things that AML can do it with the uh, treatment and uh, activities. Yes, sir. Actually, that was a very valuable suggestion from your side. So as we know, so AI has actually can select or can have the historical data and predict a particular disease. That is the most important thing that we a, can actually help when it comes to disease prediction. And also sir has actually shared about how it is very helpful when it comes to the predicting cancer and how this target specific drug delivery system can be helpful in combating this cancer or reducing the outcome of cancer and all. So there is one more important a session that is uh, we have to have a word on that is digital therapeutics. So when it comes to the digital therapeutics, it is an evidence-based medical intervention, which is actually used uh, for treating, managing and preventing a wide range of diseases and disorders. So it is a software or we can call it as a software or maybe we can call it as a medical device. So they use this software interventions uh, for bringing behavioral changes in patients and also to help or to treat their conditions do, using these behavioral changes. So it is like a subset of digital health and also like digital medicine. So they actually maximize the patient care and help in uh, conjunction with the pharmaceuticals so that it can be involved in an independent use. So I would li like to ask my first question to Mr. Pradeep Vimal. So can you tell us about what are the future perspectives of the digital therapeutics and how it can be a power to powerful tool when it comes to combating these chronic diseases? Definitely, Dr. Tibor. Yes. Basically, when we, when we go for the digital therapeutics, it means are the digital health category defined by the digital therapeutics aligns as a product, product that are deliver evidence-based therapeutic intervention to patients that are driven by highly quality software program to prevent, manage, and treat medi a medical disorder or disease. Uh, digital therapeutics are distinct from, from the digital medicine, like or some smart tools which combine a prescription medication with the ingestible sensor that is designed to communicate with the software application to track compliance. And, uh, during this uh, COVID pandemic, Increase in the virtual care usage in, in the remote and home healthcare segment across the world. The digital therapeutic infection typically delivered by a smartphone, tablet, and there are few technology barriers to their, in, their implementation and scheduling. In, uh, also, in addition, they need to monitor the health of past rural population with a chronic condition like diabetes, cancer, heart disease. It's also driven a force of adoption of digital therapeutic. In the past years, when there is some company where it looks digital therapeutics powered by diabetes managing solutions to uh, so, uh, so 80 to 60 percent increase in it's in blood glucose and blood pressure reporting into the respective and it will basic and many patients are usually used these things, these devices to check the blood glucose remote and, uh, and blood pressure also. And uh, the future perspective regarding the future perspective of the digital therapeutic, there are, there are total, there are several companies to retail company with the development of the therapeutic application for a diverse range of neurosciences patients, such as attention deficit, hyperdiffusion disorder, autism, spectrum disorder, schizophrenia depression, bipolar disorder, dominant commercial research and development, which follow the trend seen in analysis to conduct for the clinical trials. And the furthermore, a focus 
on the development the solution of the cvd disease such as hypertension hypertension hyperlipidemia acute coronary syndrome is consistent with the trend seen in clinical trial over the past decade so these are these are the trends ongoing for that and here i will provide some one question one example regarding the digital therapeutics in comes in future like doctor use a ai enabled search tool to find a clinical trial using the patient clinical data and uh, for this the data set they will find a match with the recruiting patient from the various clinical trial pages so this thing of the patient with the mobile support with the detailed information about the study can ask any question additional providing regulatory compliance consent and so and also with these mobile device and they will provide consent monitoring and support sending reminder to ensure adherence to protocol informing about the progress of the trial and then these are they get the what time of like support blood report we are taking for the we are taking from the patient so they are also remind this therapist in this, this this time we have to take the um, the reading from there and then there are like this uh, there i can say so the wait a minute so basically these are the novel trend coming out to fast growing model mobile health sector with the digital therapeutics to offer the basic guidance such as technique to overcome the insomnia and administrator at first and uh, connect with the wearables and consumer electronics to fetch the captured data and then communicate with the patients so, interface with the wearable medical equipment such as tracking the actual levels in a biometric signal from the sensor in the in the patient is and the, and when we go for the when we comes digital therapy the patient has care journey regarding so there is a so many like wearables non wearables smart device apps aggregation platform analytics that enables the patient to prevent the onset of the disease so that in the proven well being and the deliberate preventive care activity and there is a treatment that they act at this stand alone treatment with a proven clinical efficacy or complement existing treatment by enhancing this clinical outcome and when we go from and we go for the electric product like physical therapy therapeutic deliver clinical outcome and our focus on specific Specific therapeutic indicators such as heart disease, breast cancer, diabetes, ADHD, asthma. In heart diseases, like uh, these drives to behavioral change through the weight, food, and activity taking, followed by the interactive coaching, personal challenges. And when we talk about the breast cancer, they are monitored the breast metam metam metabolic changes for accelerated cellular activity, common in tumor, leading to the very early breast cancer reduction. And in Some from the diabetes, they are leverage the gamification in the application to encourage the better glucose spiking habit, regarding whether it's a patient, and they are sending the reminders to this patient so they can improve, so in, they can uh, like improve their health itself. And the asthma, for regarding the asthma, I can say that they help to understand current asthma conditions so through the set of tools to adjust dosing accordingly. so in terms of future i think and uh, so for for the future and i can say according to the one research report uh, by the acumen the global at global discovery market i reach around the like uh, 8149 billion us by 2026 so these are the booming health care sector that increase the patient and the let the digital therapeutics for the new disease and the pharmaceutical to the timeline and that these pharmaceutical industry are high demand for the development of the these pharmaceuticals and the digital therapeutics so and these technology enable the cost effective basically and that these are a very smart smart thing so to and then, now they not in, like everyone don't have to go for the patient for the reason like Uh, blood sugar taking type blood sugar blood and uh, 
blood pressure, these things. So basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. there is a therapeutic set of evaluation uh, for the patient healthcare and the patient well-being. And the, there are some MNC and in terms of in terms of digital therapeutic, they are using like GNS healthcare, GenTech, Sanofi. They are uh, like providing some um, medical devices in upcoming future. So which will which is help to help to the patient for the their their, their better uh, health. That's all. Yes, yes. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Pradeep Vimal. So you had suggest uh, shared as many valuable suggestions. So uh, regarding what I really uh, found that during the pandemic, how this actually the digital therapeutics has actually helped us in the home healthcare system mm -hmm. and also to monitor the diseases disease conditions of the patients as well as to predict the diseases as well as to reduce the disease rates so that is one thing so one more uh, i have one more question with me that is uh, to uh, dr sajeev chandran so um, on a pharmaceutical marketing perspective what can be the key drivers that promotes the adoption of digital therapeutics? Where should a student invest when it comes to these technological innovations? Yeah, uh, Mr. Pradeep actually talked about digital therapeutics. So one difference that, uh, one distinction that all of us uh, need to make uh, when we talk about digital health vis-a-vis digital therapeutics. When you talk about digital health technologies, uh, it could be personalized medicine, mobile health apps, like wearable devices, telemedicine, all that electronic health records or electronic medical records and stuff like that, which actually have been very useful during the pandemic. But then when we talk about digital therapeutics per se, digital therapeutics are not conventional medicines in the sense it is not uh, digitally diagnosing something and then delivering a, a conventional medical product at your home is not digital therapeutics. Uh, so, so we need to, the, the, the participants here need to make this distinction that digital therapeutics is a subtype of, of digital health technologies, but then here the therapeutics is digital. That means without taking a pill, the software should be helping you to uh, become better of a uh, better version of the disease, whatever you have or the disorder that you have is digital therapeutics. Say for example, uh, in, you talk about sleeping disorder or insomnia. Now in insomnia, can a software help you sleep better is digital therapeutics. So if you have, and there are, I mean, USFD have recently approved uh, uh, a, a digital therapeutic in this regard. So, so, so there are things, say for example, you are alcoholic and uh, uh, you want to reduce the intake of alcohol. And uh, I, 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 if I remember correctly, Vorbida was the name of the digital therapeutic that USFD approved last year which actually talks to the, it's a virtual reality platform, which talked to the alcoholic and then persuades based on his behavioral pattern and his own thought process, his liking, dislikes to dissuade him from consuming alcohol, distracting him into other activities is what digital therapeutics is all about, right? So see another example that I can give you is, uh, uh, and this is about, uh, managing a, a, a disorder uh, in terms of here it was alcohol, it could be drug abuse and stuff like that. Then there are uh, positive therapeutic interventions also. For example, last year, uh, BioVital SHF was uh, uh, approved by USFDA, which is basically a device, a digital device, which helps you prevent heart attacks or heart failure. And how does it do? It actually communicates proactively based on a wearable device with the physician, with the patient that, okay, you have some uh, changes that I can uh, measure in your body, which could be resulting into this. So take adequate precautions. So if it is, uh, you are exerting yourself, you are stressed out. So you are, uh, it actually convinces you to slow down, uh, relax, talk to your physician or in, in or, or a digitally sent signal to the physician's desk saying that uh, this patient is experiencing this type of, let's say palpitation or let's say 
abnormal breathing or let's say tachycardia like symptoms so so would you like to intervene and provide him with a medication so now this is also a, a type of digital therapeutics but then the therapeutics was the device which communicated but the medicine that is taken by the patient at the insistence of the physician is not digital therapeutics that is still a conventional uh, rx medication so so from my perspective um, in in this case a uh, lot of data analytics is involved understanding the disease physiology and etiology is very important because you can't create a virtual reality unless and until you understand what is insomnia per se and what is the etiology around insomnia what is the behavioral pattern of a person who is an insomnia right so so digital therapeutics can be developed based on virtual reality the metaverse part that people talk about i mean if i am depressed today and 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 all the uh, psychological issues the like depression psychosis cognitive disorders are a very good very fertile area for uh, developing digital therapeutics because that is where uh, those are perception based uh, disorders in the sense you have something happening in your mind and if that is cleared off probably you would be better off and if if you are depressed there has to be a stimulant now the stimulant could be a drug or it could be a song or it could be a game it could be something else like so i don't know what that would be but then uh, so so such so from from students training perspective understanding about the disease is very important or a disorder is very important as to what can cure for everything uh, for for example if i have pain in my leg and it is because of wound then digital therapeutics probably can only comfort me it cannot cure that pain but then if that if there is a injury and there is a uh, and if if the, there is no injury and it is a a a, a non specific pain that i suffer because of my mental state then probably digital therapeutics would work so now can i differentiate this so a very sound understanding of this and then understanding what type of stimuli and triggers can help you overcome these type of limitations or these type of disorders so so understanding of that and then creating that virtual reality or a, or, or it it's something like creating a game right i mean it is something like making you instead of being addicted worrying about the depression you or the your problem you start uh, getting into another a game or something a, a create a alternate hobby so so the digital therapeutic or the digital intervention should be able to do that now having said that all the uh, concept that i talked about whether it is uh, uh, edge technology edge computing or cloud computing iot of the things and artificial intelligence machine learning all these part combined together along with a digital or a, or an electronic device a wearable electronic device is what is needed so so from that perspective any exp expertise in any of these area if they can come together there is a possibility of working on the uh, digital therapeutics part yeah so that is uh, my perspective on that yes sir yes sir so it was a really worthy insight from dr sajeev so so i have some questions in the chat box so i think we are already late but definitely i'll go into that questions also so one for sachin sir so there was i i would like to address that question to you so that is um, how do you think this um, digital therapeutics can actually enhance the patient related outcomes whether it is interrelated or you really think that it is it will work see as already mentioned digital therapeutics like um, even uh, uh, like giving you know sim uh, a signal to a patient and getting is regular routine things to happen so that is one thing that can improve the outcome of uh, the treatment quality see one thing is like usually when you go with the antibiotic treatment or major uh, chronic treatments so you you are i mean as it's a human tendency that you forget things on uh, in a regular basis and you uh, miss to take a dose so with the uh, digital therapeutics you can improve uh, those missing dose doses or administering wrong doses and improve quality of treatments uh, by you know insisting uh, seeing that what is the actual uh, it may be see for example mental health it is basically as already mentioned by dr sajeev sir that video game so 
so a video game or the some other kind of behavioral uh, uh, perspective of the uh, individual person so based on this so it can improve uh, the uh, you know quality of treatment actually so that is one of the uh, major uh, uh, digital therapeutics outcomes that improve the uh, uh, the patient's uh, life expectancy and second thing is wrong administration of doses uh, so you, you know that we have already have uh, some uh, equipment like you know based on your uh, uh, blood sugar level uh, like we call it as insulin pumps which uh, based on your in blood glucose level it automatically re releases the required level of insulin to those those things so those are all one of the uh, techniques that can improve your life expectancy so the outcome would be the quality of treatment so that is how like if uh, the, if it is a traditional way of uh, insulin administration then you would increase the dose reduce the dose you don't know what is the glucose level you administer the routine uh, dose which has been prescribed by the uh, practitioner so you take those same things but based on this uh, you can improve wise the uh, treatment level and other aspects of the treatment so that is one thing i can uh, tell you on this this is the outcome would be the uh, outcome of the digital therapeutics yes sir yes so as you have suggested so we know that patient uh, medication errors has been a challenge uh, to the healthcare providers and uh, we know that how it had a severe impact on the life of the patient so digital therapeutics can definitely improve in that aspect and also they can uh, improve the treatment uh, levels and uh, provide a better security to the life of the patients yes sir. so there is one more question and i would like to uh, ask it is from sheikh uh, yes and it was like whether quality 4.0 and uh, the concept of industry 4.0 is the same thing dr sajeev well uh, no there is no difference in uh, industry 4.0 see basically wherever we say 4.0 uh, in, in colloquially uh, uh, industry expert refer it to as a fourth industrial revolution so that is how 4.0 so from from if you look at quality any quality management tool that or total quality management tools that support this revolution would be part of uh, industry 4.0 itself so so when i when you say quality uh, based uh, quality 4.0 it is essentially improving the data analytics part involvement of uh, uh, ai based uh, interventions machine learning intervention in the sense i talk gave you an example earlier of if if the quality control data is collected and that is analyzed by human mind you know that human mind can analyze simultaneously two variables three variables four variables and then after that we suddenly get into a limitation whereas an ai or a or a, or a software in, software probably may be able to process 10 15 variables simultaneously connect it with or compare it with historic data run the entire comparison in a fraction of time and then come up with a, a intervention so 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 from that perspective uh, quality 4.0 is very much uh, part of uh, 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 industry 4.0 uh, uh, with a uh, lot of uh, impetus given on uh, uh, this, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, collecting, assimilating and managing data. So basically, uh, understanding how exactly uh, I can avoid the issue of non-compliance and how quickly I can or how, how I can react proactively or preemptively uh, uh, identify those areas or those uh, uh, pain points and then make uh, corrective and preventive actions there. So, 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 so that is very much part of uh, industry 4.0. Yes, sir. And I have seen one more question from the side. That is whether this quality actually involves physical inspection or involvement. Well, see, quality does require physical inspection as well as physical testing. 
okay because uh, pharma products are the only products which are not uh, uh, tested and uh, so you, you unlike i mean if i can take half a minute here uh, if you if you look at if you buy an electronic device what do you come what does it come up with it come up with a label okay tested right if you buy an automobile every automobile uh, every four wheeler or a two wheeler coming out of a factory would have been subjected to a test drive and then a corrective intervention if there is a problem and then only it would have been released into the market to the distributors go down pharma products are the only products where uh, if there is a, a 1 million tablets are manufactured only few hundred tablets are tested and then remaining batch is actually released based on the concept of on on quality assurance principle that uh, the batch is a uniform batch and uh, and the representative sample is representing the entire batch right so so every tablet that you test you take is not tested right so uh, so so from that perspective parametric release is done so we we follow a principle of parametric release release of the batch into the market and so from that perspective um, um, uh, the batch is not tested every tablet is not tested but then then a representative sample has to be tested so 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 physical testing is involved but then um, uh, the, the trend analysis is what determines whether there is anything to worry about or not right so right. so if say for example if a parameter has a tolerance of plus minus 10% apart across the mean and if my values are towards 8% on the higher side or towards 8% on the lower side then i know that this is not a mean batch or not an average batch it is a batch which is having a skew, which is skewed towards the higher side or to the lower side so from uh, from a from a classical quality control principle as long as it is within plus minus 10% i'm okay with that but then an artificial intelligence based parametric intervention would tell me that will send an alert saying that no this batch doesn't seem to be part of the historical batches because in the historical batches this much deviation was not seen if that is the case that alert is sent and that alert is processed uh, manually also because there would be people involved who would have to have would have to take a decision on that and then if there is a requirement then the entire data set would be revisited and then you will have you might have a retesting or you might have additional uh, uh, corrective actions taken to ensure that the variation is not plus minus 8% it is within a, a very smaller range of plus minus 2% which is acceptable let's say i mean as an ex hypothetical example so so from that perspective it is a uh, very much imperative that uh, we actually um, uh, apply uh, the this industry 4.0 or quality 4.0 uh, in 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 most of our practices but then the input data for making decisions would still come from the physical Uh, or uh, the measurements that you would do on the way like you cannot have um, uh, artificial algorithm making the measurements you'll have to have somebody making the measurement it could be automated it could be physical yes sir yes i think that answers his question so i think we have reached the end of the webinar so a feedback form will be provided to you you can uh, uh, fill the form so yes, both yes add the one question to dr sajeev chandni yes yes please Uh, sir you are being uh, you know you are with the pharma industry uh, more than a 20 years uh, two decades and um, i loop in like uh, companies in uh, one of the uh, top leading company who are manufacturing as different uh, uh, you know uh, disease uh, captured in the market so i i just wanted to know what is the uh, uh, the data science techniques or ai artificial intelligence that has been used by the pharma by lupin uh, uh, specifically in um, seeing or identifying or predicting the uh, the market values on the disease burdens and what and and second thing is like uh, uh, do you have or the company has anything uh, in the upcoming that so we will uh, see look into the digital therapeutics in different sectors so if you have anything that you know i have already applied so that can give us a little bit insight on that so i'll answer the last part of your question first uh, digital therapeutics uh, lupin uh, 
the classical digital therapeutics in the sense creating a virtual reality as an intervention uh, we are as of now not uh, in that area uh, but then we are in that indirect uh, digital therapeutics where uh, uh, for asthma management or uh, copd management uh, uh, cancer um, uh, thing and then you have hypertension hyperlipidemia management and all so you have those uh, wearable uh, uh, systems where you can uh, through those app based uh, uh, digi bots uh, or uh, the therapeutic bots so, so those uh, we are very much in india itself we are very much in those areas uh, we have application of this um, uh, ai control uh, in our clinical trial programs so so there is uh, and because it's not managed just by lupin it is managed by the clinical trial organization cro's which actually are very much wedded to this concept so so by we, we being the client to those cro's and managing those clinical trials so we very much becomes uh, uh, become the uh, um, uh, 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 user of that technology we use we since we are we have a very big presence in the biosimilar biotechnology based uh, and biotechnology biosimilar uh, space as well as in drug discovery space so we do use a lot of data mining and data analytics uh, one of the example that you talked about was in drug design that scaffold mapping and uh, all the all 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 uh, docking uh, drug receptor docking studies and uh, uh, those type of uh, intervention uh, both for micro molecules uh, some simple organic molecules as well as for biomolecules so so that is something which uh, we are very much and uh, see in the pharma industry have been little late in adapting at uh, ai based mil uh, machine learning uh, principles and manufacturing and also because uh, most of these innovations were done by our machine manufacturers so if you look at uh, um, uh, advanced uh, equipment like uh, packaging equipment or uh, manufacturing equipment they are not manufactured per se by the pharma industry we are actually the user of it so so the actual uh, in innovation around that has actually have been done by uh, those uh, um, machine uh, uh, you talk about fite or you talk about kilian or you talk about bosch or you talk about any of those machine manufacturer who provide us automated uh, manufacturing systems to us so so these days they in install the entire manufacturing system they don't provide us a small equipment piece of equipment they with the entire uh, uh, control and command system is uh, provided uh, in that thing so in that sense most of us have adopted uh, long back those uh, systems almost like 10 15 years we have actually moved to plc scada control uh, uh, systems and then uh, one uh, a recent uh, auto in innovation so 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 if you look at business processes we have actually adapted in most of our finance and accounting um, uh, activities so you do have uh, some of these uh, uh, modules which would automate uh, human work uh, right so uh, so so all those things which are prevalent in most other industries have actually been adapted uh, in uh, in pharma sector as well so no and lupin is not a um, uh, exception there so we have also been very much into that including smart manufacturing now so so recent uh, last few years uh, we have actually uh, moved away from simple automation to smart manufacturing wherein um, uh, i i i i i talked about the digital twin concept right so 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 right now that is what is uh, the what is the, the the big thing and that is what we are uh, uh, trying to uh, be good at thank you thank you for the insight i think that answers your questions jim said yeah yeah right so i think um we have reached the end of the webinar so i would like to express my sincere gratitude to all my all the speakers who has actually joined today dr sajiv chandran uh, sachin sir and mr pradeep pimalandu so and i will also like to thank you for your valuable insights so i would like to thank the it department uh, for their firm support they are always there throughout the webinar so I would like to thank everyone who was actually involved in organizing the event and also i would like to take the names of uh, uh, mr pradeep kumar sir 
head IT department and also uh, Mr. Mrinmoy, department head pharmaceutical management. And also I would like to thank Kitty ma'am uh, for her continuous support. And I would also like to thank the people from the IT department, uh, Mr. Vagis, and also in training Lambodar and all. So again, lastly, I would like to thank uh, the audience. So whenever, for every event, you need your audience to make it a successful one. So I sincerely hope that this has actually provided you with insights on the technological trends. So that will that is definitely going to revamp or transform the pharmaceutical industry. So on behalf of IHMA Bangalore, I bid you a farewell. Thank you. 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 Thank you.